Now, uh, this section will consist in two hours and with three lectures uh, of 25 minutes and 45 minutes for questions. And our speakers will be Professora Renata Ferreira de Felipe, Professora Priscila Ferronato e Professora Patrícia Brum. We will start with uh, Professora Renata Pereira de Felipe, Bachelor in uh, Biological Science from UNESP, Master and PG in Science from USP. She did her first, first postdoctorate in Healthy and Psychological Development at UFSC from Santa Catarina, and uh, her second postdoctorate in Human Health Being and Behavior at USP. Currently, she's doing her third postdoctorate in child motor development from the perspective of system therapy in development in human uh, ethology, also in USP. Uh, she is a master, uh, member of the ethology member and social interactions research group. Uh, directed by Professora Patricia Izars, a president of and volunteer at the Maria Emilia Revolutionistas Collective. Renata is a researcher about evolutionary development psychology, evolution, evolutionary psychology, and human ethology. Wow, very exhausting. Well, people, be patient with me because I will try to speak English. So I, I prepare a brief presentation. Uh, I, I try to prepare a brief, a brief presentation, but I will talk very slow because of my English. Okay. So, uh, so today I will I prepare this talk entitled. Implications of dynamic systems to infant action development. So, go. Um, I divided this presentation in three parts. The first part, I will talk about the theor theoretical background about motor development. The second one, I will discuss the proposal of the current project that Brisade and I were in investigating motor development at the uh, Institute of Psychology here at USP. And at the third part, I will talk briefly, briefly talk about implications of dynamic systems theory for patients. So you can go to them. Uh, here I I brought this this traditional literature that uh, doesn't apply dynamic systems approach. And this traditional literature uses to say, and here I have some quotations, mm -hmm. developmental changes are caused by uh, an evolution from infant reflexes to cortically controlled behavior. Variability is considered in this kind of literature, uh, noise or error. Change isn't directly observed, being mostly inferred from some specific uh, endpoints or times of observation. And for many years, this uh, traditional literature uh, has been documenting specific ages at which children reached various cognitive, social, and perceptual motor, motor milestones. Even uh, current research like this that was published in Neuroscience and Behavioral Reviews in, two, uh, in 2018, as a fact, which is not a, which is not used to apply the embodied uh, cognition vision to motor development, used to say that motor behavior is based on a spontaneous pattern activity, which is a feature of neurotician, motor behavior may emerge in the absence of a sensory stimulus. And uh, I retrieved all the examples from this mm -hmm. paper. And motor behavior is a net product in which various neural pathways may mediate a motor action. On the other hand, 
other hand, we have the DST or uh, dynamic systems theory view. And uh, for dynamic systems, uh, the brain in, or the mind is embedded in the body of the organism uh, and both the brain and, and the organ the body is both embedded in the environment. So all these elements, brain, body and environment are always interacting together to produce cognition, which is considered embodied, that means that happens in the body, situated, that means that happens in the environment, and is considered extended and distributed. It means that happens uh, from the interaction of all these elements of the system. So the brain uh, for this kind of approach is just one more element uh, of the system responsible for producing cognitive processes. In uh, DST-oriented papers, uh, like this first one, David, uh, David's and colleagues uh, says that variability in movement systems uh, are, is pervasive due to distinct constraints shaping individual behavior. In another paper uh, published by Briseida and other colleagues, uh, they highlight the persistent, persistence of uh, variability is important for generalist species that survives in different and changing uh, environments, promoting behavioral flexibility, or in other words, different forms of doings. Uh, Lockman said that variability promotes self-generated opportunities for perceptual learning, guiding subsequent modern acts. And uh, Esther Peeling and Daniela Corbetta said that variation uh, is the manifestation of the process of change per se. So I, I brought the, all these papers to say that uh, in sports <coughs> medicine or people that are studying capuchin monkeys or people that study uh, in a child, in humans, they are always uh, highlighting that variability, variability and change is very important and questions of how the behavior happens, it uh, must be done. Uh, so, uh, this, is, this is my uh, project of postdoctoral uh, fellowship. Actually, uh, this project is a consequence of a great interaction that Briseida had with her uh, previous uh, PhD student, uh, uh, Andres, Argila, Andres Balesteros Argila. And, uh, but Andres uh, lived in, the, in his PhD, and Briseida said to me, Renata, we need to, to put this project uh, in, into the ground. Mm -hmm. So uh, we talked together, uh, Briseida, Andres, and, and I. <coughs> so our project was entitled Influence of Maternal Demonstrations of Objects on Infants' Motor Exploration. And guys, 2020 uh, started my postdoctoral fellowship. <laughs> and it started COVID-19 also. So, uh, uh, it, uh, due to the pandemic, we had a lot of problems with, with at committees because we had to do addi uh, additions, because we had to change couple, a couple of things. So, uh, we had to change the design that uh, moving from a longitudinal one to a cross-sectional, we didn't like that, but uh, we had to. Uh, we 
we changed uh, the experimenter uh, moving from postdoc to others. We changed the setting from the lab to caregivers' mothers. We changed the the type of cameras that we uh, would like to to use from professional care to professional cameras to one mobile one from the caregiver. And my uh, and this is uh, because I. I uh, firstly, we uh, had designed to, to make a quantitative analysis, analysis. so our uh, intention was to have uh, a sample of 100 and 60 participants and, and so we had, we had to change because we only uh, could collect 10 targets. So now we are just exploring our options with Quanti uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, exploratory analysis. Uh, so uh, we selected four kinds of stimuli. The first is stimulus. Uh, uh, the olfactory one was this TNT bag with cinnamon odor. The second uh, sound stimulus was a Tupperware with beans. The third uh, visual stimulus was a pot with water with glitter. And the fourth, the tactile one, was the sponge. So this is me with a very a, a, a bad face, very angry. <laughs> it's my normal face. <laughs> so uh, we decided that we, in the literature, there are a lot of studies that, demonst that make maternal demonstrations according to the properties of the objects. But uh, Andres was always saying to us, guys, we have to uh, try to think uh, concerning discordant demonstrations, demonstrations that, that uh, don't are in consonance with the properties of objects. So, if you could click on the first one, here is a demo, a concordant demonstration. So the caregiver must smell. The discordant demonstration is an impression. The caregiver should rotate the TNT bag. In the second, the concordant demonstration the caregiver should shake the object. In the discordant one, the caregiver... Ah, oh. então isso sempre acontece. Aí você vai... Aí você vai fazer Should a fingering, like a, a sliding. In the third one, the caregiver... In the concordant demonstration, the caregiver should rotate the, the object. In the discordant one, the caregiver should... Uh, it's always a uh, uh, discussion, mm -hmm. so should smell. And in the concordant demonstration, the caregiver should fingering the sponge. And in the discordant demonstration, the caregiver should, let's see, shake. Eating. <laughs> but maybe sometimes. No próximo, quando você vai. So, our experimental design was divided into three parts. The first one, uh, the mother should give the object to the baby, and the baby should explore the object before the demonstration. In the second part, mother should demonstrate the object, according or not with the properties of the object, and in the third part, the infant should explore the object after the mother's demonstration. COVID-19 again, uh, 19 actually. So, due to the pandemic, we had little attendance. Um, now, uh, we are actually doing a systematic review about how, how people are dealing with this translation of lab laboratory studies to online ones, so we are trying to do this. 
and we are analyzing the videos according to our echogram. And I put my email that just if you if you want to dig in and would like some more details about that, then we move to. So we are trying just to, to bring some examples of our echogram. This is the shaking behavior, the target behavior. I use the one. This is the mouthing behavior that generally occur with the TNT bag and the sponge, like you were saying. Uh, the banging behavior. Uh, I tried to be, to to make gifts yesterday <laughs> at one o'clock. So, <laughs> forgive me. And uh, this is um, the smelling behavior. <laughs> and this is the rotation one. I don't know if this gift was very good enough. The Gaia is rotating this pouch. And that one is the fingering behavior, but I don't know if you could see, you know. Yeah, because you can apply it after time. Just to give it a, glim a glimpse of our uh, behaviors. Watch. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, so now I brought uh, this. This is a pilot video that I watch. I see that the new video is simply the same. The last object, the TNT bag, here. So let's. See. This is the first first part when uh, Onara gave Gael the TNT bag. So Gael is exploring. Mm -hmm. So this is before the mother is demonstrating. Yes, this is this is before. So it's very. There is a student of Briseida analyzing smile and other behaviors. Now is the second part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Onara should smell is a confident situation, demonstration, and should smell five times because we we the parts should be almost 30 seconds. The first, the, the second, the third. So Gael is very anxiety, anxious actually. And Gael, uh, uh, in this video, Gael is. Um, is ten, 10 months this. In the month before, because in the pilot I put, made more videos, and in other, in some cases, the mothers just give me one click, one video. But in with nine months, this guy didn't do this, mm -hmm. the smelling behavior, after the, the demonstration. demonstration. Yes. I bought I just mean one don't challenge now. Okay. 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 Okay.
So, um, after doing these demonstrations for you, um, how can uh, DST or dynamic systems theory can help parents? Uh, we know that infant skills like reaching an object, smiling, they are relatively stable because they are re uh, repeating similar, similar shapes over time, but at the same time they are dynamically recreated moment by moment and they are, they are being all the time uh, constructed and co-regulated by the context. So, uh, dynamic systems can help designing more context and individual and ecological uh, relevant interventions. And here, I just brought uh, Beatrice Bib uh, example because Beatrice Bibi is a psychanalyst, but actually she is a, a development of psych, a psychology and researcher. And she uh, <coughs> analyzed the uh, contingency responsivity between mothers and their babies. <coughs> and she offers, after the, doing all the analysis, the microgenetic analysis, uh, she offers a video assisted uh, the uh, therapy. Biotech, I don't know how to pronounce it, the English, very well, this word, consultation to the mothers. So Beatrice um, brought the mother into, in a second time, into her lab, and she and the mother take a seat and watch, watch together the video. Uh, and uh, there is an example that Beatrice uh, told, told uh, in, a, in a chapter that uh, there, there is the, this example is from baby Roberta and baby Roberta used to have a self-beating behavior so Beatrice uh, take a seat with her mother and they look together at the video and uh, they, baby was <coughs> highlighting the moments when the mother was very anxious and interrupting uh, Robert, Roberta's uh, behavior and maybe advised the mother to slow down, to pause more and make more room for Roberta. In follow-up at three and six months later, Roberta's self-being behavior was much less frequent and in the follow-up one year later, self-being of Roberta was very rare. So, uh, I'm just trying, actually I, you, I make uh, basic science, I'm not uh, involved with uh, interventions, but I think that theory is very useful because we are considering the context, are very ecological, have uh, uh, ecological validity, so we can make this kind of uh, services. Uh, and how my work, that is a work of basic science, could feedback our parents. We decided to make a partial feedback, not individualize it, like um, BIPs con individual consultation, but we made an educational video for all families. The information and uh, content, content in the video was retrieved from Fibonacci. Briseida and Manuel, and um, we intend in the final, in the, at the end, to make uh, final videos with the main findings of our project. And this is the video that we done. Okay. 
So, uh, the main goal of doing this partial feedback educational video was to raise caregivers' awareness that each baby has its own developmental path, pace, and achievements, and they must be parents in their own content terms. Well, thank you for your attention. Here is the main papers that I use in this presentation and I would thank to the organizers for inviting me. It was a great pleasure to be here and this is it. <laughs>